see my stuff. When I pushed the door for press pass, I say, listen, the best one was when he came to cover the football game in 89. Called me before. He said, hey, listen, press pass. I need so, 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 so. I pushed the door and went in and said, listen, you have a here, Mr. Leslie, coming from the States. You cover in the game, you are in press passes. And I was told to come out the following day, collect this press pass before he even came in the country. So he said, I used to land. I pick him up, take him in the Savannah, Carnival Sunday night, and he passed all the restricted areas. Because he had the press pass, and I had the ramp. <laughs> and we went everywhere. Nobody stopped him, because it was the two cameras hanging on him, the vest, everything loaded, and the hat on, and we just moving through. He had all kinds of experience. He, he used to provide information, and photos to a government organization, which was Government Information Services. So they would cover all events. And even when he took pictures of the Prime Minister's visits, and that kind of stuff up there, he would send it down. And then one day I asked him, what's going on? You don't send anything anymore? He followed to that big man down in his chair. Communication, because the man didn't show him respect. So he cussed with the man, and tell the man, he is sending mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My boy, should I went into a tailspin? Mm -hmm. Because all the visits that were made up here, whether it was Anna Robinson, Patrick Manning, Kamala, as recent as Kamala, he would be sending the shots. And then he cussed out people for Kamala too. Because when Kamala came up, they didn't understand and her, her press person. Yeah, was a jokey man who was a lawyer before, and he get a job as press kind of press person for Kamala. Roger cussed that and fix that good and proper and decide that he will only send what he chooses to send. And at one point in time, they were calling him to ask him for pictures. And of course, he would get in court, cuss them out, and tell them he said no so and so pictures. And they would see the pictures printed up here. And a piece of shit printed down there. And Felicia, he, he had this knack about him that he liked to cuss. Go get pissed off. <laughs> and when he when he takes you into confidence, when he he reaches out to you and he jail with you, you could get away with murder. Anytime you see you and Hayden, Roger, Celestine, don't hit the top, it ain't happening. Don't first of all, don't bullshit him. Secondly, be straight up with him. If it is spelled with a W, don't say it's spelled with a U. Don't do that. Thirdly, if you want something, ask him. Don't take what it says without telling him. You will feel his wrath. And his wrath came off the tip of his tongue. He knew how to use some fluent words. <laughs> Right? That people couldn't understand. And when you get angry up here, the training accent used to kick in. And when it kick in, poor people who get in because don't understand what you mean. <laughs> they don't know what a good training MC is. They feel somebody with a, a microphone in their hand talking. This time the man cussing really, really, really bad. <laughs> Right? Listen, this is very informal. I'm just venting here right now. The thing about him that I love most is he had a way with kids. Kids used to gravitate him. You know? For example, Keith, Cheryl, and Sharon, right, are twins. Let me introduce them. They are twins. Married to my two cousins. No, I don't know who the hell is here, but he's my cousin. <laughs> I'm only beginning to realize now who he is. And he's close. Because 
Where we grow up, it has some Thomases living in a trap. Roger used to live high up from them. And he related to them. So he related to Garnet and all of them. And they're the people I grew up with. So he is cousin. He happened to be married. And he and my cousin, Sarwai. Now, Sarwai is the Indian terminology for two guys who married two sisters. Oh. <laughs> right? So it just so happened that he married. They married twins. So it's closer than two sisters. And they went to the same school too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he happened to be my cousin. And it's people like his kids and Shane's kids, Roger, have their pictures when they were babies, when they get married. He, he was at every event in those kids' lives because when he first came up here, Kurt was trapping Sharon. Right? And Kate wasn't even on the scene. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but as they, as they got together, he was in the wedding. He took the pictures to the wedding. And I am sure, I'm saying this. Look at the driver. All the way to Ohio. You and each of you, oh, and, and each of you could associate with that because any event that you had, right? He was there taking pictures. Every event, he was always without taking up more time. I want to say that Hayden Roger Celestine changed his name. When he moved up here, he was Roger Celeste. Everybody know him as Roger Hope. And the first time he gave me a business card, and I saw him, and I was like, "Who the hell?" They changed the name. But more importantly, we were friends for the last 50 years, and he has left an indelible impression and stamp in my life. It is something that I can never replace. I'll never get another friend like him. I will never have the experiences I've had with him. I will never get the advice from someone that I got from him. When I want to leave my damn wife after getting right and I want to leave her ass and move on, he was like, yeah, 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 hold on, we're doing it. Well, to you. The good woman you're married to, hold on to the woman. Mm. And I'm sure he's given many other people advice. I wouldn't say similar to that, but that be so. I'm still married by the way. And every time I come and I tell him about my exploits, he's like, so what are you doing that for? Mm. Because I'm not the most faithful husband I have in this world. I ain't gonna go this thing, right? But that's my partner, and I can share it with him. And when we sit down on the couch, that was the therapeutic couch in the apartment. When I lie down on that couch and I start to talk, he sit down in the single chair and he cocks in like he's the therapist. You're doing shit. You can't do that. You understand? My daughter experienced it three years ago. She came visiting and she spent a night with him. And she said to me afterwards, Daddy, I really heard stories about that culture, and it's true. No? That's the only culture I could put people to sleep. <laughs> Ali, yes, yes, yes. See, Ali, say yes. I would never get a friend like that, even if I born and come again next week. It will never be the same. He has been closer to me than my blood brother. I have a big brother living up here. And I know about him. I, I was asked today where he lived. And it's only because I remember Palm Gardens, is on Ocean Parkway, I remember where my brother lived. You understand? Everything is Roger. Even Christmas time, I got married and I was living in Washington. Emerson would call. Or Roger would call and say, hey, I'm going to say the fast for your cake. What cake is that? The black cake she made for me, sure. Okay. So I have to leave DC before I head to Trinidad, pass through New York, pick up a black cake just to carry for me, sure, my wife. And that's the kind of relationship that I treasured. We never argued. We never. 
You know, you have a partner, your, your cousin, or he cuts you, or some friend, and you all follow them after five years, you can see the person. That never happened with us. We never argued, we never quarreled about anything. And I want to say this too. Roger never asked for anything of anyone. He broke into teeth. He might have a dollar in his wallet. And he would not ask anybody. Matter of fact, I could say, as a matter of fact, that he would faster take money out of his pocket and give somebody else who he thinks is in need. And that person is in no greater need than him alone. But he would give them the last money he has in his possession to make sure that they are comfortable. So even in debt, he has not had to ask for anything because he was so prudent and his mother taught him so well that everything, if you have five cents or five dollars, you save two and you spend three. You always put aside. And he has had that in his genes. Talking with Henry, and Henry will introduce himself later on, what amazed me is that Henry said, that man is a different kind of human being. So I said, what do you mean that? He said, listen, he is so strong that if he had had a child, an offspring, that offspring would have been genetically powerful. You know the same modifications they're talking scientifically now about doing? I will share this with you. I was on YouTube, and there's this guy who is using the power of his mind, and he can run a marathon in snow. So he did one in the Arctic the other day. He ran about 15 miles. No socks, no shoes, and bare back. People say they might no ass, right? Well, you can do it. And here in Roger Celestine is one of those few mortals who had had the ability to heal himself. Because with his mental strength, he endured. Even when he was in pain, he would never tell you he's in pain. I remember when his spine started to curl, and he was wearing this, the guy came upstairs and measured him and stuff, and then two weeks later the guy brought back a PVC clad chest breast kind of thing that he had to put on and strap up and stuff. And I was there with the measurement and I was there with putting it on him. And he was in excruciating pain and he never said anything. He carried his burdens with dignity and pride and with a certain kind of demeanor that he was always mentally strong to cope. And just as recent as two weeks ago, Ali, about when we were here in November, mm -hmm. right, he had to do dialysis. Mm -hmm. And the dialysis technician was there and saying to me, he has to have a certain blood pressure level. And if he doesn't have that, the machine would automatically kick in and switch off, because it would be I went up to him in his ears, I slapped him in his face, I slapped him on his hand, and I pulled his chair, and he started to grimace his face. He was like, what is so and so? In other words, he said, what the fuck you him before? Well, you could see the expression in his face, right? And I told him, I said, hey, the technician said you need to carry blood pressure now. So put some effort into raising it. And within less than five minutes, the technician would look at me and say, what were you doing? Don't stop doing it. Got the blood pressure going up. And Ali was looking at me, and Ali went over and touched him on his head and said, Baby, I hear everything good. And my response was, No, 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 you don't talk to him like that. He's a big hardback man, custom <laughs> custom people, talk to him rough. And he responded. That was when I confirmed that he had the mental capability of dealing with his issues. Now, the only reason why Aiden Roger Celestine is not with us today is because his body broke up. His spirit is one of the strongest spirits I've ever come across in his life. And in everything that he did, he meant well. If he cussed you, he didn't cuss you with animosity or disdain 
he meant to shake you up for you to realize you're doing bullshit. All right? And it was his way of correcting you. He will be remembered by me and my family. <coughs> my wife came to consider him a brother because we were so close. My daughter came to consider him Uncle Roger because we were so close. My brothers and sisters know that he's closer to me than I am with them because I would cuss them and I wouldn't cuss him. Mm. My big brother, who should be here shortly, but he was there a little earlier, he knows of the relationship that we have. And he knows that my relationship with Roger is closer than him. Because when I was growing up, I didn't have my older brother. He was out here. So I had Roger. So I want to conclude by saying that he has a cousin here, Meryl, who's the only family member from Trinidad who has been able to attend. And what happened today, we're going to replicate it in Trinidad. For people to bring closure and to grieve for his passing. Because one of his dreams was to open up a dialysis center in Trinidad and go back home. And he would have this dialysis center where he would be able to offer the treatment at minimal cost and benefit from it. He also had a couple of dreams uh, about becoming self-sufficient. And God's willing, I will stay in touch with all of you in some way, form, or fashion. My points of contact are Jared, Henry, Orson, and let's just formalize those dreams because it can happen. I would like to see at least a legacy for him, and I was thinking about probably having a scholarship program for some youngster who will get an opportunity to pursue the profession as a photographer because he came from nothing. <clears throat> and after seeing the printout that Felicia did on him, it is only then that it struck me how much this man is in the media in New York. For all of you who live here, you might not be aware, but if something emanates from New York City, it resonates throughout the United States. And for him to achieve what he achieved was mind-boggling for me. And when people read it, they get to understand who he is. And your close friends don't know who you are unless something is told and your whole story it's difficult to tell your whole story it's difficult for people to know who you are and what you've done to be remembered he will always be remembered for causing this to happen for me to get to meet felicia face to face for me to get to see john here john i only see john at funerals john is a distant relative of mine and I see him for us in Trinidad, I see him for us in the States. So <coughs> he's always there, and bam, he's here. Roger Hayden used to take people. Wait, wait, wait. I thought he said that was the last thing. <laughs> Roger Hayden used to take people <laughs> and create points of contact. Point of contact. So this is the point of contact where we all get to assimilate what happened with him in our relationships and we should really treasure that. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Now, thank you, Lister, for reminding me because I could have gone on and gone on. It's 15 yes. years of <laughs> I just want you to know, don't call my name because all what I have to say, you say it already. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and now turn you over to Lystra. No, no, no. no. Voice. Mr. Voice, please stand up and say who you are. Ditto, Neil. Ditto. But you say everything I have to say. I've done already. I've done my bit. No, no, listen. I may have said almost everything.
because he was the kind of individual that impacted us in the same way. So feel free to say, I will talk about my perspective. My relationship with it is different from yours. Because I'm sure there are people here who have different relationships. Whatever I say deter you from speaking, please, you have to start to introduce yourself. What was your relationship to him? Are you a cousin? Are you an aunt? Are you a distant brother? Are you something we don't know? So please introduce yourself. Because there are a lot of people here who want to know who is him. Thank you very much. really universal to all of us, I think. Uh, because we knew that same person. We knew that person who was, uh, the part about him not holding people with disdain. That may have been for friends, but there are some people who he had some good disdain for. Mm. He did not uh, did not take fools lightly, uh, so we say suffer fools lightly, but at the same time, in the industry, there were many people who it wasn't good when people tried to disrespect the culture in terms of not even be, being willing to pay a small amount because he was willing to offer his talent, thank you Herman, for allowing him to have a venue and an outlet to show the work because very few people get the opportunity to get their work out. Um, this is a slightly different age because it's no more cameras more times is phones, you know? And so these phones, <laughs> that's this day, you can get to this day with phones. Didn't like phones too much in that technology, because what? You have set your whole life into this, this particular experience, understand items from the chemical base to the finished product, uh, and somebody comes along with a camera and sticks the camera up in, I mean the phone, and sticks the phone up in front of your camera after you've been sitting there waiting for this photograph, then here comes that phone. Not too nice, but that's where the technology has brought us. So for those people with the phones, this day, uh, a lot of nice words, a, lot of, a flurry of nice words that they might not, as say, they might not even understand what they're going through, but they know something is happening. It wouldn't be nice. Uh, Raj, as he went through, he says consistent challenges. Anybody who has that opportunity to, to find a methodology and be consistent, uh, on a three-day basis, six o'clock in the morning, out, back in, and sometimes going from dialysis straight to whatever the job was gonna be, whatever the stakeout was gonna be. That's not, for people who are not ill, you kinda have to be like very disciplined and which came from sports and stuff to be able to continue on that regimen, especially when that regimen is taking you down, is draining you, but Roger knew enough to be able to tell the technician what they needed to do when he went into the space to get the dials. It was fun watching that happen because, yes, even there, he would make sure to curse a few people out. <laughs> they have to get that shit straight because it's me. You're dealing with me, so I'm telling you what to do. Don't tell me what you're doing. I'm going to tell you what I need to be done, and that kept him alive. Now, the circumstances, uh, circumstances under which he had to leave us, uh, taxing. Someone wants to get and say, you know, tweaking in terms of dealing with this. We can only do so much in our lives, and we need to do that. I want to come back to that particular type of story. You know, the whole elemental idea of, of taking, take, taking and dealing with culture from a mud base, from a very low base, to being able to cover, yes, all the prime ministers that came through here more times, and that's the Trini mentalities. In covering these, uh, these dignitaries, you would run upon ignorance. Mm -hmm. And in dealing with ignorance, and you didn't have to be a photographer to, to, to get that experience, but in dealing with that ignorance, it oftentimes made you wonder, why am I doing this? Why am I giving myself so much to these people, trying to expose them and show a good picture of my island, mm -hmm. and they can't even appreciate what I'm trying to do. Worse yet, they won't pay. He offered one uh, institution, uh, Serious service now. I'm going to cover your stuff. You just need to. You just need to, 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 to cover me for the basic film and stuff. This was back in film days. Cover me back for that. I ain't looking for no big money. Give me a give me a certified office. They wasn't able to follow him up. He didn't appreciate that much because we knew the value of what it is that you're documenting before other people figure out this is valuable history. 
-hmm. whether it's Marshall and Cano and Trinity or, 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 or going out to get a football game where <laughs> Trinidad loses when they leave the stadium party, in, <laughs> you know, that's a good picture. Or, or whether it's uh, you say both coming across the, 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 the finish line first, that the last type of situation, monumental situation because he's breaking records and you're there to record the record. Nobody else has that type of stuff. But what's going on right now is that this history, when folks talk about continuing the legacy, if you don't work on it and create a document, a document, not a show, a document that gives a child somewhere in a school an opportunity to see this stuff. Understand, Herman, once again, publishing world. When people see these images, they're not even, it's like writers. Most people who read are not paying attention necessarily to who wrote that story. That story is important in the understanding of the correct historical context that will go into 100 years, 200 years, etc., on this particular topic. The photo that accompanies that is extremely important because why? People see the photo as the introduction, and a thousand words comes at them before they get to read the story. The photograph introduces them to what the thing is about on a larger perspective. Now, you're only getting one or two pictures out on any particular situation that goes on. And there are thousands of images that relate to what our culture is about, produced every day by very serious people. But it doesn't get to the newspaper. It doesn't make it to the magazine. Some little black child does not know that this thing happened. Some adult black child doesn't know that this thing happened. And so it's passed. The history is lost to these people. Unless somebody there, usually somebody else, some other grouping of people, is coming in, sees and understands the importance of this particular culture to the world, and then takes it up and gets a grant and writes and blah, 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 blah. For the longest, we talked about how this particular, this particular talent was going to translate itself into the larger world. And it's, it continues to be a challenge in a world where millions of images are produced every day, probably every hour and hour, by people all over the world on any particular subject matter. And the challenge is to get your picture, which is tiny, because you, all you have to be is the first. It doesn't have to be the best, but it needs to be there to accompany the story. If you're coming in, after, so I don't call them deadlines, they dead lifelines. If you're coming in behind that lifeline, the reason they call it deadlines is because the picture goes dead. It's lost. Next picture, whatever it is. There's a, one of my favorite pictures is somebody jumping off the Empire State Building. Why is it my favorite picture? You don't see a person. All you see is like the edge of a jacket or something. And the rail with the Empire State Building, but they're gone. And you know they're gone. All you see is not a complete person. I've seen pictures where they're a complete person after they've, after they've landed. I don't like them too much. But the one that has just this little piece of shoulder and the, the great picture, wonderful picture. It's a valuable historical document. Nothing else like it exists. People jumping from the World Trade Center. Who's collecting this type of work? Somebody like Elton John, who has one of the fab most fabulous photo collections in the world. And various other people who see this as being important. Talk to people now about photography. All they want to know is, uh, send it to me on the phone. You know, it ain't getting printed. It ain't going nowhere, other than trapped in the phone. So that's a whole historical context that's lost. People have no idea when the time comes. What's it? I lose the phone, boy. The phone get wet. So and so. It's gone. All of that understanding of what happened in that time, the tree never even fell in the forest. No record. So the, 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 the visual griots, as I call them, are necessary. But if people don't realize that this is not worth $10, $15, $1,000 for one image, people don't understand limited edition, archival print, types of prints, you know, what they're worth, collector edition, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't understand, you're talking scientific to somebody who doesn't even understand how a hand gets on the ground. You know, it's like talking. Uh, uh, one of my favorites is arguing with somebody at 11 years old, where do babies come from? I tell them they cut them all out. There are no babies coming through that way, you can't pass. You, you, it's a fool, it's a fool. Then when they took us to see a movie on birth, and I get this, I said, damn, I have to go apologize to this person that I'm a fool, that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Meanwhile, my major is biased. 
So how do I, how I go to go and apologize to somebody and tell them to cut out all babies? I don't know what the hell we're talking about. That's where we're at right now. People don't understand what's true from what's lie. And we have to battle through to get to that. One of the ways we battle through is through photography. But in this day and age, photos no longer have to be actual. They can be manipulated, but they can still make it into the social sphere. So you will be exposed to lies. Raja loved the truth. He loved to be able to capture whatever it was, as it was, without any interference. And so I say that's when you get disdain is for trying to get in between me and the objective. Objective finish line for Raj, as I say, in, in the midst of it, it was always a race. So he was really, when you hear all these different stories about who he was, the track team guy, the long jump guy, you know, the, the, the person who is living his life through being able to do his art, do his work, and not be able to physically do the things that he wanted to do, he was able to accomplish that. So, I, I'm, I, you know, at, at these times, I'm real happy that I at least got to know Raj Celeste. Hayden Celeste, Hayden Ross and Celeste, you know, all of that, you know, and as I say, when he changes and he goes into this, this business talk, then you know, it's a serious business now, we're trying to cut a deal, we got to cut the deal, but we're cutting the deal not from the, the local level, cutting the deal at the highest level, I'm talking to you seriously now, I'm not trying to talk to you like it's a joke and we will do a no, 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 how can I help you, what is it that you need me to do? When should I be there? Or what's going on in the, after that, blah, blah, blah. And he's in this business here. And so to see him go through all these changes, 